As Singapore's economy restructures, the government has placed much attention on strengthening the Singaporean core in the workforce. In particular, there has been a focus on professionals, managers, executives and technicians or PMETs, which make up 54% of total local employment. I'm Cheryl Goh from Power 98's news team. In line with Labor Day on 1st May, we have a panel with us, uh, very distinguished guests for our Break Room Conversations special, and they are all uh, tripartite partners. First, we have Manpower Minister, Mr. Lim Sui Se. We are also very honoured to have with us Mr. Ang Hin Ki, Assistant Secretary General of NTUC. And last but certainly not least, we have Mr. Douglas Fu, Vice President of the Singapore National Employers Federation. Mm -hmm. So thank you very all much for joining us today. And I will be the moderator for today's panel discussion. So maybe let's go straight into the session. Um, maybe we'll start with uh, Mr. Lim. Going back to the very fundamentals, why do we need a Singaporean core? Well, uh, basically, I think if you look at the Singapore workforce uh, on the whole, uh, we have about uh, more than 2 million uh, local workers and uh, more than 1 million foreign workers. So in other words, the competition is about two-third local and one-third uh, foreigner. Uh, the reason why we need that one-third foreigner uh, is basically because uh, uh, in Singapore, we don't have enough uh, local workers. Not because we are no good, but we don't have enough local workers. So we need the one-third foreign workforce to, to complement, to supplement us uh, in at least uh, three areas. So, for example, uh, in some areas, we call it the capability gap. Some areas where might, whereby we may not have uh, uh, the, the capa capability as yet. Uh, secondly, it could be in terms of the number gap. Uh, we may have the capability, but we don't have enough in, in terms of number. Uh, thirdly, is the timing gap. So, in other words, uh, yes, we may have the capability and the number in time to come. But in the meantime, what do we do? So, basically, we use the one-third to complement to supplement the two-third. Now, having said so, uh, we have to be very mindful that we do not become overly dependent on the one third. So in other words, uh, this two third is, is very important uh, for our uh, future development uh, because at the end of the day, uh, as we continue to restructure our economy, uh, transform our economy, we are going to continue to create uh, better jobs, better careers in every major sector of the economy. So from the individual's uh, point of view, we want to make sure that as many Singaporeans as possible, uh, they are able to take on these jobs, uh, uh, capitalize on this uh, opportunity that we are creating for them. Uh, at the same time, if you look at it at the, from the industry different point of view, we want to make sure that the, uh, every major sector of the economy, of the industry, we want to make sure that the Singaporean workers, the local workers, uh, hopefully they should be playing the main role and not the supporting role. But last but not least, I think uh, at the national level, I think having a strong Singaporean core in every major sector economy is, I think, very important so that the, we as Singaporeans, as we continue to develop nurture our economy, I think Singaporeans must feel proud that this is our home and that we have a, a, a main role to play uh, in sustaining the growth of the economy and that we create uh, this a brighter future together. So to me, that's why strengthening Singaporean core is so important. But given Singapore's interconnectedness with the global economy, uh, do you think this 2 to 1 ratio is sustainable in the long term? I think so. Uh, I think the 2 to 1, uh, I would say, is about the right ratio. And what we have to do is to ensure that the, as we move forward, because you see, the Singapore workforce, the local workforce, uh, the, the, not the Singapore workforce, but the Singaporean workforce, uh, the growth is slowing down uh, because uh, with the aging of the population, with the low birth rate uh, over the years. So as a result, uh, we are seeing a very rapid slowdown in the growth of our local workforce. So for example, the last uh, five years, on the average, uh, the number went up by about 55,000 a year mm. in the last five years. Yes. But in the next five years, the growth will drop by more than half yeah. to maybe about 20,000. So our concern really is this, is that, the, is that the, if we don't strengthen the Singaporean core, then the day may come mm. where Singaporeans one day may become a minority in the Singapore right. workforce. I think that will be, a, in my view, a very uh, 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 undesirable outcome. Uh, so there's a reason why I think the 2 to 1 ratio is something that uh, we have to uh, uh, do our best to maintain. Uh, but more importantly is that the, as we pursue this, uh, uh, maintain this uh, 2 to 1 third the ratio, it should not at the expense of our competitiveness. Right. Yeah. So in other words, we to make sure that the 2 third will be stronger. We also make sure that the 1 third is better. But more importantly, find ways to get the 2 third and the 1 third to work together. 
uh, to to complement each other, to uh, support each other, so that I I I this is my mathematics. Uh, is that hopefully one the day will come where the two third plus one third will be greater than one. Mm. Mm. Okay, maybe uh, a question from Mr. Ang. Mm. What is the significance of the Singaporean core from a worker's perspective? So the significance to our workers with respect to this uh, two third one third and Singaporean core concept is. What are you going to do to invest in me so that I become more productive moving forward? Hence, a lot of this discussion, uh, especially coming to May Day, is about how do you use skills future to ensure that I have the right skills to carry me to the future. Whatever is the new job, whatever is the new processes, whatever is the new robotics program coming on stream, uh, do I have a future? Do I have the right skills for the future? And what is the government? The uh, corporation and myself using various skills future credit, earn and learn program, and the various schemes available. How do I ensure that I have the right quality to be able to be more productive and to deliver what Minister said earlier about two third plus one third is greater than one? Definitely has to come from the efficiency and the productivity that the two third can carry forward. Mm. And for Mr. Fu, from the business and especially the SME's perspective, uh, what is the value of a Singaporean core? It's huge. Um, SMEs are local enterprises mostly, or mainly. And if we have a Singapore core, like what Minister has uh, spoken about the ratio, it acts as a stabilizer. You have a stabilizing workforce with the skill and quality and training that like Mr. Ang has mentioned about the kind of skill sets that is relevant for the future. Then we look at the one third that either there's a gap in numbers, yep. the skills gap, or the timing issue. And from there, actually, while the SME are growing, because SMEs will start small and they will actually grow on the journey. It's like the little children. So as they grow along, we need them to actually build the workforce at the same time, look at where the future will be for the enterprises. So this whole thing comes together as a whole ecosystem. And ultimately, we also will hope to realize that the two-third plus one-third will be the greater one. Right. And But do you think, maybe this is a question mm. I can open to the floor, um, how would this affect diversity in the corporate? I mean, if we have too many Singaporeans, sometimes the thinking might be a bit too similar. So sometimes having foreigners can provide that a different perspective. Do you think diversity? What's the you know the balance between diversity versus a Singaporean core? Yeah, I, th I think this is an important question. Uh, uh, for example, I think like what Hinky and the uh, Douglas has mentioned, uh, we emphasize a lot on quality, on skill, on capabilities. Uh, the reason why we do so is because uh, as we transform our economy uh, in, in the future, uh, in a way we are creating, uh, we are we are striving to create jobs of the future. Right. Yeah, because we believe that the, if we can. Uh, be ahead of the rest of the world uh, in pursuing the jobs of the future that will give us the uh, uh, our greater source of competitiveness at the same time we also recognize that the uh, if if the singaporean core is not able to meet the needs of the industry then you can have a number but not in terms of the capability not in terms of meeting the needs of the industry uh, the manpower ministry basically uh, our uh, key mission is to try to uh, maximize the matching between the jobs of the future and skills mm. of the future. Mm. In so doing, uh, we hope to enable as many Singaporeans as possible to pursue the career of the future mm. and yet at the same time strengthening the competitiveness of the industry. So therefore, I fully agree that the diversity is important, but diversity need not be defined by nationalities. So in other words, we can actually equip our Singaporean workforce with the diversity, with the capability uh, in the kind of number is needed but always remember that the, we should leverage on the one third so the one third should add to our strength yeah help us to compete together uh, with the rest of the world rather than compete internally right. and locally right. mm. so any thoughts on mm. like what mr minister said about leveraging this one third for like skills transfer knowledge transfer you know, both from the business or the workers perspective in fact, we encourage enterprises that are holding on to the one third to actually leverage on this with the connectivity back to the country mm. to collaborate with other enterprises. So we need to come up with new business model, mm. which we call business model innovation. Be very lean in terms of how you are used, utilizing the workforce, whether it's Singapore core, and how you use the connectivity of the one third 
to connect back and utilize those assets that back in their home country. Mr. Ang, how, how are workers keeping up as well with this transformation? I think um, maybe let's look at this whole narrative, the discussion from another angle. When you have, say for example, uh, a football team mm. and he has a local crop of players, in order to win, not just domestically, but across, say, Europe and the rest of the other type of competition, you need to bring in talent that complements your team. Uh, it's not about bringing the best, but bringing people that complements mm. so that you are more competitive. You can do better. And in the process of doing better, you also uplift the local standards so that people become uh, as good, if not better. So this combination or this mixture is about making the football club or in this case our businesses more competitive they can do well they can get the right type of uh, contracts they will be able to prosper and then there's more to share with the workers right yeah. so that you when you're you are prosperous you have more profits and just you, your profit can invest back into either in the form of wages or in the form of uh, continual upgrading the workers mm -hmm. then you will realize that a hey, that will enable us to attract even better talent because what you want to do is to continually have this pipeline of locals who are better. We should continue to ask ourselves whether or not uh, this so-called e this economy or this football club of ours can continue to compete well and win regularly mm. or if not all the time. Going back to your football analogy, it's a bit like um, Jermaine Pennant joining Tampanese Rovers and helping to lift um, the status of football in Singapore, you know as a whole and, and with, spectators a coming back player, to, right? to, to <laughs> want to watch and yeah. other players were wondering why did he come to Singapore yeah. something happening yeah. there mm. and then yeah. you know coaches will be interested mm. and hopefully advertisers will come in and say hey, there's a higher viewership mm. sponsors mm. want yeah. to come in and that may itself um, uh, lift up the entire viewership and excitement in yeah. the, the scene okay so Maybe, Minister, the government, like the COS, was recently concluded uh, for the Manpower Ministry and the government already has a number of schemes in place and you announced that some of these schemes will be expanded. For instance, the Career Support Programme, the Professional Conversion Programme, as well as PMAX for SMEs. Um, why do you think enhancing these schemes will help to strengthen the Singaporean core? Yeah, the, uh, for us to strengthen the Singaporean core, we have uh, two main, uh, so-called two main strategies. Huh? Uh, firstly, it's a sector by sector. Mm. So for every sector of the economy that's going through this uh, transformation, mm. uh, we try to look ahead and say, look, over the next three to five years, as they pursue these uh, jobs of the future, as they require skill of the future, mm. how mm. do we channel yep. uh, uh, Singaporeans into every major sector of the economy? So sector by sector, uh, mm. we work together as tripartite partners, uh, SNAF, NTUC, uh, SNEF, NTUC, MOM, plus uh, the relevant uh, uh, industry and agencies. So sector by sector, we do so. Uh, but we believe that the, while sector by sector is important, we must also not forget about providing helps to the individual, individual workers, individual enterprises. Uh, the reason is because uh, as we speed up the process of uh, transformation, we expect uh, more companies uh, uh, to, be, uh, to go through uh, this uh, 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 pursue new business model, new concept, at the same time, we expect more workers to be affected by redundancy, mm. maybe retrench mm. or lose their job and so on. So therefore, for these workers who are affected by redundancy, our top priority is to bring, bring them back to work as quickly as possible. Because the longer they stay out of employment, I think the harder it will be for them to go back to employment again. So uh, that's the reason why we decided uh, to expand uh, the coverage of all our employment and career support programs. So for example, under the CSP, Career Support Program, uh, the main purpose is to help mid-career PMETs uh, who are affected by redundancy to help them to go back to work quickly by subsidizing their wages. Yeah. So for example, if a mid-career PMET were to go back to work with an employer uh, uh, with a minimum salary of $4,000 and more, uh, under the CSP, we will provide wage subsidy for the first year. Yeah, so it can be between 10% to 40% depending on their age and so on. Now, another example yeah. is to help the PMETs uh, affected by redundancy for some of them to actually convert to a new profession. Yeah, because uh, if that profession that they are in, for whatever reason, they run out of a suitable opportunity, 
maybe the next best thing to do is for them to convert to another profession. But the process of converting to another prof- profession, first it takes time, uh, secondly it takes a lot of money yeah. to pay for the training and then so on. So therefore, under uh, our professional conversion program, uh, likewise uh, we provide uh, which support as well as uh, training, uh, training support. So the intention basically is to really uh, do as much as we can, uh, but whatever we do, yeah. uh, we can do only this much. At the end of the day, we need the individual workers to have the confidence, to have the courage to say that yes, it's time for me to transform myself as well uh, with the help of all these uh, programs. And like you mentioned, actually a lot of the schemes offer significant wage support. Uh, I'm not, not sure, but maybe from a business perspective, would the question be what happens when the wage support stops? Business enterprises should yeah. not uh, just uh, totally rely on the wage support. Yeah. Uh, it should be just a uh, kind of bon- bonus for the meantime, just to help to elevate the situation. It gives a little bit of incentive, so to speak, to actually help this group of people. Uh, and in the long term wise, businesses should have their business model to be sustainable. And that is very important. If you are sustaining based on subvention from somewhere, that cannot last because what if the the lifeline is not there? So business have to transform such that they have a model that they can continue to thrive and continue to build the capabilities for the people in the organization to be ready for those future areas. So the sectorial manpower approach that is being done at the tripartite is an excellent, uh, really trying to crystal ball and looking at what the future skills are like. And it is not every time we'll get it right because nobody knows what the future will hold. Mm-hmm. But the intent of everybody, all our people approach to try to build a better future for everyone, yeah. it's important because that motivation actually will eventually result in something that's workable. Mm-hmm. So enterprises have to continue to mm-hmm. make sure that it's a sustainable model. Yeah. And I think yeah. just to add that, the, I think what that, uh, Douglas mentioned is a very important point, uh, is that the whatever which support that we offer, uh, of firstly, obviously there's a time limit, and why do we do so? I think it's important. So I give you a, a very specific example. Uh, there is a gentleman uh, in his early fifties. Uh, he's working as a business development director uh, with an MNC uh, for twenty three years. And uh, one day, for whatever reason, uh, he he left the company. He lost his job. So he was looking for for jobs. And one area that he was prepared to explore uh, was with the SMEs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the SMEs, as the Douglas mentioned, uh, they make up for they employ about two thirds of our yeah. of, of our employment. So it's a very important source of employment. So he he tried to get a job with the SME. Uh, actually, the SMEs find him attractive because uh, he, his expertise in business development is of uh, great uh, relevance huh, to to what they are doing. However, yeah, uh, to employ somebody with the kind of expertise experience, the wages is not low. Yeah, uh, not low. So as a result, you have a situation whereby the SME was interested in his expertise, but not too sure Cannot match. whether whether <laughs> he's worth that smart, that worth that much. Well, let's hear the case of the uh, PMETs yeah. with the expertise experience, interested in the job, mm. but not even sure whether the SME environment is something that uh, they will be uh, uh, suitable for him. Mm. So what they need is really uh, go through a period of way to get to know each other better. Mm. Mm. So with the CSP, Career Support Programme, we came yeah. in and said, okay, with this uh, wage subsidies on the, on the part of the PMETs, he doesn't have to take a severe wage cut mm. okay. to try out this new career with the SME. Mm. On the part of the SMB, uh, they don't have to pay so much salary mm. to try to try out this uh, okay. PMET. So um, from the workers' point of view, we're fairly glad that there'll be an expansion and an enhancement to this career, career conversion program. Yeah. That really addressed the other uh, problem in the equation, which is uh, new jobs, I don't have the skills, uh, how do I get into that program? So I think this this announcement by uh, MOM about wanting to expand and enhance this professional conversion program will address the other segment of the market. Yeah. So the, the key question now lies in how do the agencies and the MOM and various partners explain to PMETs that there is such a program, how you're going to benefit from it and how will you apply for it and what are the opportunities available to it. I think that the difficult job now is to convey that uh, program benefit 
and the application process to people who need it most. Yeah. And in your experience though, um, with all these schemes targeted at PMETs, mm. is it really easier for them to find a job? I, I think um, from my observation yeah. and discussion with a lot of workers, there are, there are four scenarios that happen. One is many people got such a scheme and I don't know about mm. it. Mm. So there are people who don't know. Yeah. There are people who know. I think I heard a bit about it, but I'm not so sure what it is. Uh, I think it is this. So they know a bit, but they don't know enough to act on it. Yeah. And there are another group who say, yeah, I, I did went to try what, but it didn't give me what I want. Okay, so they, they went for some of these training program or so, some of these assistance, and they didn't, didn't deliver to them what they had expected. And there's another group who, like what Minister said earlier, a uh, business development uh, person who uh, went through the thing, got himself uh, new opportunities, and he's quite happy with it. Okay. So, the last group, of course, we hope majority will become like him. Then the third group is, hey, how come I went through this? It didn't give me what I want. Of course, you can't expect uh, every training program you go that can give you exactly what you want. There will be some adjustment needed from either your side or the, or the part of the employer. But the, the more worrying thing is the first two group. Mm. I don't know about it. Mm. Is there such a thing? Yeah. On the other second group, I think I know, but you know, I'm not so sure. Mm. I, I'm not acting on it. So I think this first two group, uh, we need to, in fact, put in more resources yeah. mm. to get to ensure that they know. Yeah. All the people when around them who need it, they say, I know about this program. Mm -hmm. There's this place you can go to. There's this uh, facility that somebody will explain to you. Yeah. It's not someone throw you a brochure and say, uh, there you go, please read it. Uh, there's this website, please go and serve. There is actually a coaching process to help you um, sort of embrace that new change that you will have to yeah. undertake. Yeah, right so. now, in fact, right now, every year we help about more than 5,000. Right. More than 5,000 PMETs uh, either to uh, take on jobs or, or convert their profession. And uh, with this expansion, uh, we uh, we have the capacity mm. uh, to, to reach out to uh, to support uh, more than 10,000. Mm. Yeah, so I think as uh, Hinky mentioned, the key challenge will be in terms of uh, creating greater awareness, uh, broader outreach. Uh, that's where the MOM we depends a lot on our tripartite partners, mm -hmm. whether it's the SMEs or, or PMETs or through the unions. And I really hope that the, the more of the PMETs uh, will take full advantage of this. Uh, we cannot guarantee them uh, that the, there'll be no pay cut. We cannot guarantee that there'll be job waiting for them. Uh, but what we do promise them uh, is that the uh, the tripartite partners will do our very best, mm -hmm. right, yeah. to uh, to offer the kind of. Uh, a variety of opportunity and options yeah. huh? so yeah. that hopefully at least one opportunity at least one option will be relevant to, to each and every one of them right. yeah. so please step forward and yeah. take full advantage of so, it so um, I also encourage a platform like uh, Safra Radio uh, to mm. yep. not just do today's <laughs> show yep. uh, this show alone but you know to subsequent promote. show bring along people who will be successful yeah. bring along uh, coaches who manage to guide others through and employers so that uh, they can share their life experience yeah. about actually this is how it uh, actually took place what kind of uh, mindset i need to change and you know bring to life uh, with uh, examples of uh, individuals who have struggled through or been successful and then others will come to sort of um, from hearing their stories yeah. Mm. start to feel either encouraged or know a bit deeper yeah. about it yeah. so to continue with your good work and, and invite more <laughs> guests coming to your show right thank you okay and minister you previously mentioned double weeks double week firms but during mom's uh, committee of supply debate you raised the issue of triple week firms so can you explain how the double became triple yeah i think if you look at the singapore on the whole singapore yeah. on the whole uh, of all the jobs uh, that the that uh, pay more than three thousand three hundred dollars which is the uh, minimum salary, uh, qualifying salary for the employment pass. Uh, this is uh, for foreign PMETs. For them to work in Singapore, the minimum salary threshold is $3,300. So if you look at all the jobs in Singapore that pays more than $3,300, uh, 79% are actually uh, held by locals, mm. Singaporean and PR, uh, 79%. So foreign, foreign PMETs, they account for only 21%. But yet, but yet, uh, uh, some, some Singaporeans have the impression that why is that the, some of us, when we go to work in our office and whatever, we see ourselves being a minority. We see a lot of foreign, foreign PMETs. And I think the reason is because what I call the pockets of EP concentration. So in other words, on the whole, it's only 21%, one out of five. But maybe in certain 
companies mm. in certain segment of the industry or certain location, maybe there's a high concentration of, the, of this uh, uh, foreign PMETs. And I think this is unhealthy. So therefore, we decided that the, in addition to looking at this, uh, the, the qualification, the experience of the individual EP applicants, we also look at the industry, look at the companies that, the, that they are going to, to work for. And uh, so therefore, uh, uh, we first came out this uh, double week. Yeah. So if a company uh, has a very weak Singaporean core, so high concentration EP, uh, that's a single week. Uh, double week means uh, looking ahead the next 18 months, three years, they don't have a firm commitment to strengthen the Singaporean core. So today you are weak yeah. and you have no commitment to strengthen it further, we call it a double week. Mm. Now, but in some cases, we find that the double week, uh, if they have good reasons to be double week, for example, uh, uh, if, if certain sector they say, look, I, either Singaporeans are not interested or not able to find them and so on, but I need to have this in Singapore because it has got the uh, uh, contribution to other segments of the economy. So in other words, it may not be creating jobs in the company uh, for Singaporeans, but it's helping us to create jobs in other companies, in other industries. Yeah. Yeah. So that could be one consideration. So therefore, we decided that the four start uh, will focus on what we call a triple week. So in other words, you have a weak Singaporean core today, you don't have firm commitment mm. to strengthen the Singapore core in the future, and at the same time, you are not helping us to create jobs in other sector of the economy. Then these are the companies, the triple B companies, where we're going to subject them to closer uh, scrutiny. And uh, in fact, some of them may face an uh, eventual uh, suspension of the uh, EP yes. uh, privilege as well. Yes. So, Mr. Fu, I mean, I think there are currently about a hundred uh, of such triple week firms. Um, in, in your perspective, do you think the government is doing enough to help them? Or how do we help more firms become triple strong instead? Well, probably you can look at it like uh, a sort of a challenge. So there's a challenge of this uh, a pool of 100, about 100, that has got the, the triple week issues. Yeah. So after the identification, you will actually have the different agencies coming in to first coach, mentor, and facilitate some help to get them to move towards becoming a triple strong because there are triple strong uh, organizations as well and these are best practices that we should follow yeah. and we should be helping these companies to do so i think the help comes from different agencies and multi-dimensions so it's not just single agency um, doing that um, most important is able to first identify and communicate that this is an issue and once we agree that this is an issue we all work together to resolve it yeah. But as Minister mentioned, um, one of the, the main things is that they face the potential suspension of their work pass privileges. So how do you think this will, is this a really big impact on them? Oh, well, definitely it's a big impact in order to be an impetus for them to react or to act <laughs> on it. <laughs> because if let's say that you, you, it's like telling somebody, uh, please, uh, you know, we started this in Singapore a long time ago, yeah. that don't litter because it is going to make our place not so pleasant mm. and everybody just decide to just drop their wrappers and do things then we started with if you're going to litter then we're going to find you <laughs> <laughs> remember that journey <laughs> so so i think based on what douglas have shared and what minister have have uh, alluded to um when we look at this triple week uh, do you see this suspension of work permit as a uh, a stick and we have various wage support program all this is to make it easier for you to make yourself strong we're not just coming with a stick and say behave yourself we're saying that look use these vitamins this supplement to make yourself strong mm. don't allow yourself to continue to say this is my current state of affair this is how i've been running my business this is my modus operandi you know uh, i will continue to do it this way use those tools those supplements to make yourself strong you don't have to remain weak and what we want to do is enable every business that comes here to operate or already operating from here um, to be stronger so that you can make more money mm. uh, our workers will be able to enjoy a good employment opportunity and we throw in enough vitamins and supplement for you to grow by the day mm. Mm. also the, the uh, one uh, one the uh, good news huh? Good news is that the, uh, the Ministry of Manpower, we look at the current 
uh, uh, dependency on the employment uh, pass. And uh, we're happy to say that, uh, in fact, a vast majority of the companies in Singapore, uh, they're very healthy mm. Singaporean core. Mm. So in other mm. words, uh, a vast majority of them mm. uh, do have uh, a high percentage of uh, PMETs who are local. Mm. All right. So therefore, the triple weak are actually a very small, uh, very small number. The triple strong that we've mm. identified, uh, the number is much greater. Uh, but what we hope to do is uh, over time is to continue to reduce the number yeah. of triple weak, continue to strengthen the number of uh, triple strong. Mm. So therefore, yes, we'll take firm action against the triple weak. At the same time, we're going to engage the triple strong in a very proactive manner mm. uh, under a partnership program. Uh, uh, we call it the Human Capital Partnership Program, whereby we're going to work with the triple strong to make them even stronger in all the three areas so that they can become the role model to help us to spread this uh, mindset that the human resource is a very precious uh, uh, asset uh, mm. for us to keep uh, building on, keep investing in. Okay. Mm. And it, it, actually, uh, just to add on to that, I think uh, from an employer's view, uh, generally most of the peop- most of the companies are like what Minister mentioned, is super strong. Mm. And it is really um, sad that the, the overall uh, perspective is that uh, there are these issues that we are seeing. So I think that's where all these various uh, programs together coupled with the tripartite uh, partners will want to actually help to level up these uh, companies that have been identified. Um, I think the purpose was never to just uh, identify and punish. It's to actually identify, communicate and control okay. them to and en- bring them up together. Um, it is important for organisation to understand that the rules uh, are not applied evenly now. It is not like a well-behaved company or those are uh, strong companies. You are subject to the same kind of hurdle we want to put on those who are weak. We're actually differentiating and say that if you are weak in your commitment, in your effort, these are the hurdles you have to go through. If you are strong, we don't have to subject you to the same type of hurdles. Right. We will give you as much advantage or as much support to leapfrog from where you are. So this is uh, actually quite a major shift, you know, if most of us don't realise it, that in the past it's called, um, okay, if someone uh, talks in the library, then we say, no talking. And everybody, <laughs> we, we treat as though everybody behaves like that. But now we're saying that, look, for those who are doing this, we're going to segregate, we're going to treat it differently. The rest, we're going to give it a lighter touch mm. because you mm. are doing yeah. well. So yeah. there's this subtle shift, but I think it is a very precise and very... Um, targeted approach rather than thinking that everybody behaves this way just because a minority do it so all have to be inconvenienced yeah. this is I like think it is not okay maybe sorry because of a bit of time mm. constraint so just to sum up right a conclu- maybe mm. some concluding remarks from each of you uh, in terms of what do you think will happen next and what will the employment outcomes be in your imp- opinion in the next five years will it be better or worse maybe we start with Mr. Ang the Globally speaking, a lot of regions and countries and cities are struggling to find employment opportunities for their young. Young graduates, uh, young graduates now number 70-80% of their cohort and unemployment for the youth uh, hits double digit in many places. Yeah. And the problem uh, two for one is that overemphasis on academic qualifications and perhaps lack of investment in creating new jobs. We today look at trying to get our young to go through your earn and learn program and the skills future focus on vocation getting skills that the employer want so i think the the next five years we have to continue to push very hard at our institute of higher learning your it's your polys to get people to acquire skills that will be relevant in the future i think that effort must continue to press on because we already see examples yeah. elsewhere secondly with regards to jobs we must assure investors coming to singapore that it is a place whereby we welcome in uh, companies that want to invest here that can create good jobs. We will do the best uh, with regards to whether it's SNEF, uh, NTUC or MOM to create an environment in which you can offer good jobs to our locals. You also can make yeah. money working from Singapore and there are profits to be shared with regards to your workers, your shareholders and yourselves. Okay, thank you. Mr. Fu, your thoughts? Enterprises, especially this year, are going to face some real challenges because of the, the global perspective. 
Um, and therein lies the opportunity that they could spend a, more time because when it's business as usual, everything goes and everything is busy. You don't have the chance to really take a step back and relook at the model and relook at the human capital, which will essentially be a very strong, very important component mm. of any business that is going to to do well for the future. And enterprises have also start, have to, to start thinking about how they could be part of that training. The the old mindset uh, is people. Students will come out from school, all train up, ready to enter industry. Today, it's about how can we work with the schools to start training them for some traineeship, internship programs. Yeah. So the training to get them onto the speed to market is shortened and more relevant. This kind of skill sets that's required. Yeah. So company, this is an opportune time for companies to start looking into those areas. Mm. And of course, once they start looking into that, then they have to look at the national and the overall uh, movement of the local workforce. And once they can align everything together, they will can they will have the ability to create the sustainable model that they need to continue and evolve and transform for the future. Because this transformation yeah. is not the first and last of it. There will be a lot more and they could be much faster and they have to get used to this. Uh, I would say that uh, it can be better, it can be worse. It all depends on what we do mm. over the next uh, five years. Uh, I would say that there are, there are three key challenges uh, facing us. If we can overcome them, then I think employment outcome can continue to be good for Singaporeans. Uh, the first is, uh, uh, I think the, the point brought by Douglas earlier, is how can we become more manpower lean? Uh, mm. This is very important because uh, in the last uh, five years, uh, every year we created about, on the average, we created about 110,000 jobs every year. Yeah. And we could do so because we could uh, find enough local workers, enough foreign workers. Uh, but the next five years, things are to change very rapidly. Uh, the local workforce growth is slowing down. The foreign workforce will continue to be moderated. So what it means is that the, in the next five years, we have to grow our economy, not by keep injecting more and more workers, 110,000 yeah. a year, but rather uh, try to make better use of everyone uh, uh, treat everyone better, so we call manpower lean growth. So then that's number one. Uh, if not, manpower become a bottleneck, right. but if we're able to succeed in becoming more manpower lean, then I think we can continue to grow. Uh, secondly is to how can we strengthen the Singaporean core, yes. the subject mm -hmm. that we discuss a lot. Because uh, if we can strengthen Singaporean cores, then uh, many Singaporeans will be able to take advantage of the better jobs, better careers that we're creating for them. Uh, third, uh, last but not least, is how can we ensure that the Singapore workforce, the two-third Singaporeans, two-third local, plus the one-third foreigner, how can we make sure that Singapore uh, Singapore workforce on the whole, uh, two-third plus one-third will be greater than one, will, be, will continue to be among the most competitive in the world. Mm. Uh, because in the next five years, not only will to continue to attract more investment, in fact, we will attract even better investment. And to attract better investment means that to overcome stronger competitors, bigger competitors. So I would say that on the whole, if we can evolve ourselves yeah. to become more manpower lean, to have a strengthen the Singaporean core and enhance the global competitiveness of the Singapore workforce, then I would say no reason why the next five years huh, uh, we cannot continue to have a good employment outcomes for Singaporeans. Okay, thank you very much. I think that's about all the time we have for today. And thank you to all our three panelists for sharing all your valuable uh, inputs and your perspectives. Um, so hopefully, you know, we can move on to look forward to a more interesting five years in the future. So thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. For Pan 98 News, this is Cheryl Go. Goodbye. Love life, love music. Power 98.